Praise God. Praise God. All who are able, please rise for the reading of the gospel. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Be you may be seated. Well, friends, you're getting a Saturday sermon. <laughs> Just the way it is. But, you know, it was very interesting to look at this text in today's context. And I think I have some things that will um, help you and will cause you to think. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. This morning, we continue with our theme, All In. This is an invitation to be fully engaged in personal ministry and the life and ministry of the church. We have talked about invitation and all being welcome to share in the gift that is God's love. We have discussed that you, no matter who you are or what you do, are valuable. And today, we're going to dive into the importance of being an influencer. An influencer has the ability to influence behavior or opinions of others. Jesus was an influencer, maybe one of the originals. Think about it. This morning's gospel immediately follows Jesus emerging from the wilderness where he faced temptation. This is the very, very beginning of Jesus' ministry. Now, Jesus is walking along the Sea of Galilee, preaching repentance and the coming of the kingdom as he goes. Simon, who's later named what? Peter. That's right. Simon, and who was Peter, and his brother Andrew are casting nets in the shallow waters by the shore. They probably heard Jesus preaching and watched the doings from their boat. The gospel says Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee and he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting nets in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. What a remarkable thing to say. What is even more remarkable is that these two men leave their nets and follow. Why? Well, there are some cultural things we need to understand. Jesus was teaching and preaching along the shore. It is likely that Simon and Andrew heard him and recognized Jesus as a rabbi. In the Jewish tradition, in that culture and at that time, it was a great honor to be called by a rabbi. Rabbis only called the very best and the very brightest to refuse would have been an insult. Simon and Andrew were also probably very curious about what it would mean to be fishers of people. Without hesitation, these men immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. Jesus now with Simon and Andrew in tow come across the brothers James and John. Jesus asks them to follow too. Now, it is likely that James and John knew Simon and Andrew. They could have been friends, or they may have been competitors in the fish market. Was it the request Jesus the rabbi made, or curiosity about what Simon and Andrew were up to that made James and John leave their nets? We can't be sure. What influenced 
these four men to follow. And more than that, who influenced all the followers of Jesus to come? Who influenced your faith and life? And whose faith life are you influencing? Influence. It is the ability to impact or influence the behavior or opinions of a person or a group. Now, I don't know about you, but I have heard the word influencer a lot lately. Today, social media is the most powerful platform for influencers. Of course, the degree of influence can and does vary greatly. Some influencers have a couple thousand followers, while others have millions. Regardless of the size of their influence, an influencer is one with a privileged position in the eyes of a number of individuals. They have the power to sway their followers' purchasing behavior, thinking, and even beliefs. This means an influencer can manipulate followers into buying unnecessary products, adopt hostile negative values, and become obsessively materialistic. Or they can use their influence to help others in ethical and service-oriented ways. As I have indicated, individuals with the power to influence masses of people are not new by many, any means. Still, the manifestation of this age-old phenomenon through the advent of digital and social technology is unique and exclusive to this generation and this time. It has transformed the way businesses, nonprofits, government agencies, and yes, even churches, reach and communicate with their constituencies. Be that to help sell a product or champion an idea or message. What makes an influencer is that the individual has followers. In social media, the numbers are important, but reputation and authenticity are a little harder to measure, but incredibly important. And there are four aspects of influence that are intangible, but really important. They were important back in Jesus' day, and they're still important today. The first is connection. Connection. Has the influencer fostered a strong relationship with their audience? Influencers connect with their audience. Jesus did this. Imagine the connection with the masses through the Sermon on the Mount or the feeding stories from the Bible. Jesus connected with individuals through healing miracles that instantly changed lives and beliefs, not only for those who were healed, but for the witnesses too. The second aspect of influencing is communication. Influencers are driven to communicate their message to those who have not heard it and to those who disagree with it. Jesus was a great communicator, using illustrations and parables to get the message across. Think about the parable of the sower, or how about the prodigal son? The message is powerfully projected in story. Jesus also told individuals what they needed to hear, too. Think of the woman at the well. Another aspect of influencing is values. Today, we ask of social media influencers, does the influencer work with the brands that align with their lifestyle or values? People want to know if an influencer lives by what they preach. Are the message and the lifestyle congruent? Certainly Jesus lived a life in perfect alignment with the message of God's love and saving grace. The last aspect is authenticity. Today we want to know if the influencer endorses anything that would make a user stop and ask, 
does that person really use that brand? We want endorsements to be genuine. We want the influencer to be the real deal. Jesus' authenticity is apparent particularly in his life and in his prayers. The last several chapters of the Gospel of John are Jesus' last teachings and prayers for his disciples and the followers to come. Jesus proves connection, communication, and values through his words and actions in the upper room. Remember the Last Supper? Or how about washing the disciples' feet? Jesus was endorsing belief. Belief in him and in that God. God is love. King of glory, friends, you have all been influenced, and you all are influencers. Think about it. Today, we heard the story of Jesus calling his first four disciples. You and I today are part of the 2.38 billion, 2.38 billion, big number, of Christians in the world that all call themselves followers of Jesus. Who are your faith influencers? Those who introduced you to Jesus, maybe brought you or invited you to church? Who inspired your faith? Certainly we understand faith to be a gift of the Holy Spirit. But the Spirit often works through people. Faith is passed from generation to generation through influencers. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could trace our faith family tree and see all the influencers that impacted our coming to faith? All of them could be traced to the day when Jesus asked Simon, Andrew, James, and John to follow and to become fishers of people. You and I as Christians are the faith influencers today. Having been blessed by faith, we communicate that to those with whom we are connected. For our message of God's forgiving love and grace to have impact, our values and our lives must be authentic and congruent. You and I, we don't save anyone. The triune God the creator, redeemer, and comforter does that. You and I are living examples of what the difference faith makes. You and I point out God's activity in the here and now for others to see. We share our stories of healing and hope. We pray for others to come to know Jesus. We share the good news. The good news is that Jesus, your Lord and Savior, died a gory and tragic death on the cross for you for the forgiveness of sins. He died a real and complete death just like you and I will. The good news is that he lay in the tomb and on the third day he rose victorious over sin, death, and the devil. The good news is that he is ascended to the Father and has prepared a way for us. The good news is that all of this was given freely as a gracious gift. This is the story that has influenced us. We are invited to enter the story, to live the story, and to share the story as influencers. Each of us has influence over someone. Someone is watching you, Someone may even be looking up to you. We are called by Jesus to follow and to be fishers of people. We have the greatest gift to give the world. We have faith. We have God's love. Let us share that with the people we are connected to in our lives. Amen.